could be the biggest corn fest yet. Hello and welcome to another episode of Kill James Bond. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. Joining me are Devon and How you doing? absolutely Abigail Thorne. Hello, my name's Abigail. Welcome to See? my home Th- and there she to is. Philosophy Tube. She's here. She's here. She's it's here. Like- <laughs> She's here recording an episode of Kill James Bond with us. Oh, um, Abby, how do you how do you feel about all those people being mean to you online? No, I'm gonna fucking kill that cunt. That's a bit rude, Abigail. Come now. <laughs> I just, I, I'm so glad that we definitely have Abby with us recording She's with this us. one. Yeah. No, if if you're not familiar, Abby, Abby is Abby is away for the moment because of um, she was walking to to record with us, and then a giant piano which had been suspended above the street was sort of like recklessly let go off of its hoist. Mm. Um, and then that 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 fell on her, causing all of her teeth to like fall out like piano keys. Um, yeah, it's it's a damn shame. Someone dangled a, a decently paying a uh, acting role at the Globe in front of her, um, but little did she realize that they'd actually just painted that onto a wall. She ran into it <laughs> full speed and was completely flattened. The thing I admire about Abigail is that she's so like spontaneous and capable of like ad libbing. Especially when she's here with us, recording as she is now. Absolutely, women exist to be fucked. I'm sure about that. <laughs> she's uh, she's she's controversial. She's a controversial woman. She is. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I've just I've just taken a look at our viewership retention figures on the uh, oh, on Podbean. Oh no. <laughs> Apparently, they get oh no. about two minutes in and throw their phones at the ground so hard it cracks the concrete. <laughs> uh, that's a damn so shame. So no, Abigail. So yeah, happy. <laughs> I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but no. Uh, until until Abigail has recovered from her piano injuries, uh, which she sustained in the line of duty as a podcaster, and as such, you know, we'll still be getting her full pension and benefits. Yeah, and um, if she does die in in line of duty, she will be getting the Purple Heart. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but we, the two of us, the yes. Double Dragons, if you will, are covering. By doing some not Bond movies, uh, because we would never do a Bond movie without one of our number. Mm-hmm. And so instead, what we're doing is Planes 2. Yeah. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you made me watch Planes 2. Um, I made you watch Planes 2. Planes Fire and Rescue, if you prefer. The thing is, I looked at this on Amazon and I was like, okay, hmm. 84 minutes. No way yes. is there going to be. Anything that's going to snap my mind in half, like I'm traveling through the warp, uh, unshielded. Incorrect. This is going to fly by. Be nice and easy. <laughs> there won't even be that much to discuss. Oh, ye of little faith! Because when I pitched this to you, you said, "I'm not sure if there's enough here for the, for like a full a full hour of mm. us talking about it." And I, I want you to know. You were very, very wrong about you wrong. misjudged planes, fire, and rescue so badly. I was, I so, was so wrong. <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna get into it. So we begin with the dedication. Planes, fire, and rescue is dedicated to the. This is verbatim. The brave Mujahideen. Fighters. I was about to make that joke. You fucking piece of shit is dedicated to the the courageous firefighters throughout the world who risk their lives to save the lives of others. Mm-hmm. And this caused me to have three thoughts in quick succession. Uh, thought number one was the the brave the noble firefighters of Afghanistan. That's right. Um, thought number two, I would absolutely watch that as like a prestige documentary about like Afghan firefighters. I would totally do that. Oh, a hundred percent. Thing number three, really, when you think about it, every other movie is a piece of shit for not being dedicated to firefighters. That's right. Like, plane, Planes, Fire and Rescue is really just kind of like sort of raising the moral bar for, for all movies because, you know, you go and see, say, I don't know, The Matrix, Resurrections, or whatever else. It's not fucking dedicated to firefighters. It doesn't say shit about firefighters. And those firefighters, as Planes, Fire and Rescue informs us, 
are, you know, courageous and they risk their lives to save the lives of others. Just a whole, like, theatre full of firefighters sadly getting up and taking off their hat, <laughs> leaving the theatre. Yeah, they're They've all there never been able to watch a movie before. Gear. Yeah, this absolutely. This is the first one. <laughs> absolutely. They're going on, like, a firefighter, like, works outing where they all go directly from the fire station in full uniform to go and, to go and watch a movie. Absolutely. And it doesn't leaving, have this. Leaving the entire town completely undefended from fire. Absolutely. Which absolutely. does happen it's several like... times in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, um, now, wh- the thing is, of course, we've mm. only watched Cars 2 and Planes 2. That's so correct. it could well be that all of the other movies start with this movie is dedicated to, like, the cops, or this movie is dedicated oh, to, like, EMTs. Yeah. They could be working mm-hmm. through it. That's true. But I I feel like it may not be the case, because, uh, as you mentioned, we haven't seen Planes 1. That's right. But the gist of Planes 1 that I get from the opening of this movie is that Lightning McQueen brackets Plane. Um, His his name is Dusty Crop Hopper, but I'm going to be calling him Lightning McQueen the whole way through. He's the same guy, he's the same character, he's just voiced by Dane Cook, of all people, instead of Chris (laughs) Pratt. Yes. Um... At the end of, like, Planes 1, he had won some kind of plane race because he's Lightning McQueen. Yeah, and it's implied that it was, like, around the world, right? So he he's like a... Yes. He's, as the name Dusty Crop Hopper implies, lol, he is, he's a crop dusting plane, and then by the mm-hmm. end of the movie he has won a race around the world. Uh, and that's yes. where we start out, is because they don't know how to make a movie where the protagonist isn't a racer. They can't yes. do it. And much like Cars 2, he has come back to his hometown, which is here called, oh fuck, what's it called? Propwash Junction. Uh, which, again, raises some questions, right? Because <laughs> Propwash Junction, it's, it's not a town, it's an airport, right? Yeah. Uh, th- they mention a couple of other towns that, that are like, you know, Grand Flaps, things of this nature. Mm. Those are also all airports, right? Yeah, but but this exists in the same universe as Cars, right? We see the sentient Cars. That's the same universe. Oh yeah. So uh, are we talking then here about a kind of like uh, like a redlining process whereby Cars and planes cannot live together because the only people people who live in Propwash Junction are either planes or like accessory vehicles for planes. Yeah, or, or like the owners of utilities, like the the hotel guy. Is a car. I thought the hotel guy was also a plane. Um, he might. You know what? Impossible for th- me to remember. There's, there's, there's <laughs> I, I'm just. Th- th- I mean, listen. We 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 got three minutes into this movie, and I wrote down a big question about like, does this imply the existence of like racial segregation in the cars universe no. between planes and cars? Because they don't really seem to interact, and they certainly don't like live together. It's just, uh, uh, mm, mm. anyway, the thing about Dusty, right, is that he pushes himself to his limits when he's racing. And we know this because we can see inside his cockpit, which I guess is like inside his eyes. Yeah, Um, he sort of looks down, but the thing is, is his eyes are the windshield. So it's he looks like the inside of his own head. Yeah, he's looking at the inside of his head and it's got a lot of like buttons on, which God knows how he'd fucking interact with those. Yeah, he, he has he has a cockpit in and in the inside of it. So like is that like God alone knows how he's gonna be pushing those buttons. Or even yeah. see like what's going like it's like it's like if you could look down at like the lower eyelid on you mm. and it had information yeah, yeah, about yeah. how you're doing. I mean that does sound cool. I yeah. do I do kind Actually, of want we should that. Get that but like then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he pushes himself to his limits, as helpfully indicated in the form of this like gauge for like his gearbox pressure or something. Mm-hmm. Um, he he goes out for a race with his um, mentor brackets coach. Yeah. Um, now I, I, this is also a concern, right? His 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 mentor brackets coach is is called Skipper, and he's a he's a chance vault corsair. Uh, it, it marked up in the shut up. I have autism. Uh, marked up. I was going to say of, shh. 
<laughs> VF seventeen, Jolly Rogers, the uh, the the sort of notorious U.S. Navy fighter squadron. Anyway, the point is that means that World War Two existed in the Cars universe. That means that he killed Japanese planes in the Pacific, uh, kamikaze planes, like sentient planes flew into sentient ships for the emperor brackets plane oh we don't I, we don't even need to go into that much detail like in no, in the no. previous planes movie it's explicitly stated that world war 2 happened mm -hmm, absolutely which means that there was a, a plane bracket sentient called Enola Gay and another That's plane right. bracket sentient called Boxcar uh, who 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 drops nuclear weapons <laughs> We did this. We did this last time. <laughs> okay. We've okay. Done We're not going to do the history gay. thing. We've done this. Okay. Okay. Fine. But it's still weird. There is there um, is something that I think they're cowards for, which is um, hmm. briefly the plane, uh, plane Lightning McQueen does like a fucking circuit over New York City, and it's clearly yes! New York City. Yes. And I don't. I don't. I I went back and rewatched it a few times. They don't fucking put the Statue of Liberty in there. <laughs> they, like, they, they don't. They don't put the Statue of Liberty in there because it would have to be... Yeah, Wait, they no, didn't they... want to broach that. Hang on, I do they? I think they actually might do. I think they do, and it's a forklift. I think that's genuinely a thing that they do. The thing that they don't it's have in that way. shot of New York City is... is the Twin um, Towers. Is the Twin Towers. They, they have yeah, the Chrysler made in 2014. building. They have, they have the Empire State Building. They, I think they have the Freedom Tower, which replaced the Twin Towers. Um, so, mm. so again, like this is this is table stakes at this point. But again, we're talking here about like sentient plane. There's like it makes a lot of sense, right? Because this was released in 2014, mm. and it's a children's movie. So they're not yes. going to instinctively see the twin towers when they imagine no. the New York skyline. So it's it's a no. fair decision to leave it out. But you can't ignore the implication. what that implies. <laughs> Well, the thing is, right, the reason why we see this New York thing is it's a montage of, um, yeah. of, of Lightning McQueen doing plane racing shit. And, like, he, he signs his autograph with his, like, tire. Um, and, and, like, he signs his autograph on an airliner. He so does. we're already establishing. That's literally the previous shot. So oh, it is a forklift. You know, yeah, I've just looked we, it up. we established two things in very quick succession airliners real and sentient. And uh, New York City does not have twin towers anymore. So I mean, that's canon. That is that yeah. is canon now. The, again, the, like, just, just big big victory lap on the cold was, shot we was, made was during the, Cars Two. Was the was the airliner hijacked from the inside no. by cars working for Al Qaeda, or was the car or was the was the was the airliner itself radicalized at some point? Um, and. I think okay. you've got to accept that the airliner wasn't radicalized. It was definitely because we see cars go into mm. the airliners. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. That's too, true. So that's true. And it's it's yeah. Okay. Completely so, reasonable. Nineteen cars. Um, but unfortunately, he pushes himself too hard during this training montage, <laughs> yeah. uh, and discovers that yes. he has the plane athlete equivalent of a fucked up ankle. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I just I, I have I have that Sorry, on tap because slipped. <laughs> <laughs> no, because what happens is he pushes himself too hard, and in this sort of training montage with Skipper, uh, he he tries to do like a loop, and we see in a sort of like horrifying internal tracking shot through his body yep. that part of his gearbox just fucking like explodes, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And he stalls. He stalls out. Um, and for a second, there's only the sound of him breathing as he like plummets back to earth. And Lightning McQueen is suddenly aware of like the possibility of death for the first time in his life, which is a heavy thing to drop in the first ten minutes of a children's movie. I would say. Um, yeah. It's just like, oh yeah, you're just gonna, you're just gonna like. You know, die of a sporting injury, and you just plummet out of the air and just fucking like crash and are killed. Um, it's not great. I mean, it it it. it mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that happens. <laughs> that happens. But 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 Skipper gets him home, right? Uh, and then he goes to the plane doctor, mm -hmm. and the plane doctor is a forklift. She's a mechanic, I guess. Um, and and she's she's working on him, right? 
And all of his dumbass friends are there, who I presume are like the fun little side characters from the first planes movie. Like there's a there's a, like a, a fuel tender. There's another forklift. I don't remember. Yeah, um, complete cowardice to not make the uh, protagonist of the second planes movie one of those guys. <laughs> like they fucking but, did. Like it's it's the, fucking the, mm, chug gets to be. That's, yeah. But but so the doctor is trying to use like serious doctor voice and give him like bad news about the gearbox and all of his stupid friends are just there doing bits, which is like the worst thing I can imagine as someone who has friends who will do bits. Mm-hmm. It's like all of you busting into the doctor's office <laughs> while I'm waiting for some test results. I mean, we all did that to Abby when she was hearing that's about true, the, uh, that's the true. piano teeth Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Um, but so so she, she she tells him that he has become physically disabled. And he can't race anymore because his gearbox is like they don't make them anymore. Yeah, because he's an old fucking crop duster plate. Like yeah. they wouldn't make spare parts for this guy. No, they they can't fix him, and so therefore uh, he can't like push himself to his limits anymore. And she installs a warning light. In him, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So that anytime Ooh. he's about to like redline his 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 gearbox, it starts beeping at him, and he has to ease off, otherwise he'll die. Um, and he's of course very depressed by this. This is yeah. like w- what we would think of as like a life changing injury. To uh, and again, I cannot stress enough that these are planes. This is a this is a cartoon plane. Yeah, but that's <laughs> it. It is worth noting that every so. <laughs> Because we're talking about this just, guy receiving, just in case you, yeah. His his racing career is over because he's received word he has an absolutely ir- like unhealable, mm-hmm. unfixable injury, and it's heartbreaking to him. Also, he is a plane. <laughs> yes, he's being told this by a forklift. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love the use of forklifts in these fucking movies so much because they're such a crutch. It's like oh, every yeah, time absolutely. you need it's someone like, to be we, able we to need do something, with something arms. they're like, yeah. oh fuck, put a forklift in. We, we don't have a forklift in here. Um, so, so he's, of course, depressed by this, and he doesn't quite believe it, so he goes out in the middle of the night, and he flies, and he tries to like push himself again. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the like warning sort of alarm thing goes off, he has to ease back, almost crashes, and then when he lands, he knocks over a big fuel tank and starts a fire. That's right. Now, Unfortunately, this town has a firefighter. Yes, it his does. His name is yes, Mayday. Mayday he... is 900 years old. Mayday uh, is this ancient fucking vehicle. Uh, genuinely phenomenal. Uh, he's played by Hal Holbrook for some fucking reason. Just like... Uh-huh. He, it's like he a leaves 1930s the fire... fire, fire yeah, fire you fire know what? There's engine. actually something worth noting here because the fire alarm goes off and it cuts to an internal shot of the fire station and mm. then Mayday just sort of drops from the ceiling Yeah, like he's not a going down a pole, he just a pole. fucking yeah. lands <laughs> bodily yeah, he, just has a, he just has like a void in the floor of the, I guess, like apartment where he lives with all the and weight then... of a fucking fire truck being dropped from a first story <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking lands leaves yeah, and then he yeah, has yeah. to go back and put some glasses on uh, he does he's his old. best yes uh, he's adorable but the thing is he's right really he has to get, he has to go and put out the fire and this raises some more questions because th- this means that they, they, they hook him up to a hydrant and then they pump water through his body which he then projects at the fire out of one of his orifices. Well, I'm not okay with the concept of like a sentient car, but by this point, I've made my <laughs> yeah. peace with it. You're sort I'm of not it, taking it, like psychic damage it, anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you can kind of see the things that they put out. Like oil is like piss or whatever, but also they drink it. I, I. But like they drink piss in the movie. It's fine. Yeah. Yes. But the idea that. that like. Uh, a, a fire engine exists, and the point of this fire engine is to be plugged into a mains water supply, suck a shitload, like an industrial quantity of water, and then like project it bodily at a fire. That 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 is that's extremely uncomfortable. uncomfortable to me. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's like because like the water just... dropping planes that we meet later. That's fine. I can understand that. Because they're just sure. picking it up and then dropping it, right? 
Sure. Not, I mean, granted, it is in their bodies, I guess, but the, the like. It's like having, it's like, I don't know, drinking a bunch of water, holding it in your mouth, and then, like, spitting it back out. That's yeah, not exactly. that weird. It's not it's that not weird. It's not traveling through the whole fucking, like, sigmoid process. It's not cleaning them out This guy's fucking, fucking fire through. hydrant fucking hookup. It's not, it's not a combination enema no, piss. No. Like it, <laughs> just a complete through-the-body uh, water experience. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Mayday. Fucking clean pipes by the end of that. Uh, but... That is not enough to put out the fire, unfortunately. <laughs> so, in a last-ditch effort, multiple uh, members of the community of Prop Wash Junction... Prop Wash Junction, yep. They pull a water tower over... Yes. ...to put it out. Yes. And this works. They do put it out, but with some difficulty. Yes. Um, and also, they've just destroyed their water tower, so... Y- yeah, which, how is Mayday going to get his enemas now? We don't Absolutely. know. Um, He's an old man. He's, he's an old man. He needs, he needs them. Those pipes clean. <laughs> he needs. He gets like some fucking yogurt put in, like uh, Harvey Kellogg used to have. Them. <laughs> okay, so, so the animal loving fire truck and mm-hmm. and friends then. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, Animal Loving Fire Truck is fine to me for adding and friends to that. Yeah, and, and, and associates. And his associates. Um, the next morning, the fucking. They get in trouble. They the, get in trouble because fucking OSHA or the FAA or some. Yeah, federal the firefighter agency, cops run through and are like. The firefighter cops show up. Um, and they're like a big sort of like airport firefighting uh, fire engine and like another forklift because they needed hands to do the like is that guy writing down everything I'm saying jokes oh yeah so yeah um but they they they, they sort of like administratively shut down prop wash junction because again the whole town is an airport right and they just pull its license to operate because they mm-hmm. only have one firefighter he's mega old uh, oh, yeah. His 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 enemas don't work any any like to any like real extent anymore, and so therefore, in order to like reopen the town, they need to modernize him and then hire a second firefighter. That's right. Ridden by guilt, um, Dusty goes to see him, where he's like being sad in the fire department, like, looking at old photos, which is a very funny thing to try and have to convey if you're an animator when you're talking about, again, a truck. He's yeah. Just like, he's, like, hunched over. He's just looking at them, like, he's not interacting with them in any meaningful way. <laughs> it's just... No, no. But yeah, he's just he... an old fire truck, and, like, the that's the plot of the movie, baby. We've got to get this fire truck jacked. We've got to get this old man fucking... Built. Yes, yes. Also, I missed a bit, which is an important bit, only as a throwaway joke, which is that they remember that this is supposed to be like a comedy movie and you're supposed to like keep the adults a little bit engaged. Oh, yeah, no, too, I also right? wrote this one down. So, so in between, the, in between these, the, the fire starting and him getting his diagnosis of being uh, fucked in the gearbox, th- they go to a bar, right? And the bar is called Honkers. Bar is called Honkers. And they do a series of jokes in there which are not very funny, but like the existence of Hooters, as, like in but, allegory form in the plane slash cars cinematic universe. I don't know. I think that there was like one funny one, which is the first one, which is unfortunate, which is where um, one, of the, one of the guys is just like, she left me for a hybrid. I didn't even hear him coming. <laughs> Which I did genuinely quite enjoy. There are some <laughs> yeah, pickup that was, truck that jokes was good. there yeah, as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, okay. I, I just I just wanted to note that just because I wrote down here femboy honkers. Um, in any case, so Dustin like goes and commiserates with Mayday, um, mm-hmm. and he sees that he has a photo of an like a, a firefighting plane, and he thinks. But wait a second. What if I be the? What if I become the second firefighter? Right. What mm. if I go and I get trained and I get certified to do this? Um, it's and, not like he has anything else going out. on. 
No, so. no, because like uh, he's he's been like he he's suffered from life changing injuries. He can't do the the racing anymore, yeah. and that's his passion. He's sort of like at a loose end, and he thinks, oh, maybe I can like you know do something else, you know, that's you know useful to people. Yeah, find um, find some meaning in. Uh... Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Helping people. It, it's a good lesson, all things considered. It, it, it is. This movie has, well, much like Spy Kids 3D, this movie has some <laughs> things about disability, right, that are perhaps good lessons to teach kids and some things that are perhaps not. Um, there are, yeah, there's some things coming up that we've buried the lead on extremely hard um, that I'm excited to get to talk about later yes, on. Yes, yes. So but, may, may they send him. To, to his friend Blade Ranger, who is a helicopter. Yeah, which I wrote down uh, in full caps. I was, I was watching this with my partner. Um, mm. God help her. Uh, I just put it on on the big screen and she didn't leave, so she ended up tangentially also <laughs> watching it. Um, it was like, fucking Blade Ranger? And she said, I hope he's hot. So that'll be nice. It, it, well... Is he, he's kind of hot, though. <laughs> Like, I'm he's, losing he's it. He's voiced by Ed Harris. I'm Absolutely. not really able to like make a determination because I hear Ed Harris's voice coming out of a helicopter, and I'm like, "That's Ed Harris." Uh, yeah, you just totally like see Ed Harris. And, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so, so Ed Harris, Blade Ranger, works at a national park. I forget what it's called because it's not important. Um, so it's just Dustin called like. Piston Peak or something like that. Yeah, D Dustin flies out to the national park, and at this point, I wrote down. Ah, fuck, that's a good joke, actually. It's the one good joke in the movie, as God. far as I'm concerned. Which is, so we've established, both in this movie, although I didn't mention it, and also in, like, the Cars universe, that um, tractors are like cows, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're not sentient. Well, they're sentient, but they're not sapient, I guess. Yeah. They, like, moo, they drive around, they're, like, you know, uh, pastoral animals. So, as he's flying in, we see a bunch of slightly more modern designed tractors with a bunch of like roof rack headlights uh, in a distinctive shade of green and it took me a second then i realized that they can't actually make this joke explicit for like licensing reasons which makes it 10 times funnier but that's a deer yeah because of fucking john, john deere, deere tractors <laughs> that's it's I, yeah that is good actually it's it's, it's, it's it's a good visual gag it's the only one in the movie yeah there's like a bunch of them and there's one with like these massive roof racks that extend way <laughs> past the end and i was like oh that is fun i do like that that some of the it's not character design so much but like i hate to say this but the creature design <laughs> yeah, really the, the, the creatures the creatura because they're not they're um, not characters the character design uh, is abysmal um it's just yes. a plane with like kissable lips eyes. if it's a girl yeah. or just eyes if it's why a boy. does the girl plane have lips okay we're gonna get into this because all of the girls have lips <laughs> anyway yeah dustin, we meet a dustin, cast of fucking characters here so let's just dustin go through flies them in into order. the like air it's into the like air firefighting base yep. right where he, he where he meets several people in quick succession now yeah. the first the, he meets a bunch of forklifts, which are not important. He meets a bunch of the like smoke jumpers, who are like mm -hmm. little tiny forklifts, and they all get like names and personalities and accents, and then we forget yeah, right. about them for the rest of the movie. So yeah, it's not... a, a series of Mister not appearing in this movie. Yeah, they just... genuinely go to like some effort to like introduce them, and then you just forget about them. Uh, Dale Dye, like Hollywood's only military advisor, is there as like an old uh, like flying boxcar transport aircraft. Yeah. Then yeah. there's then there's there's Dipper, right? Dipper who Dipper, Dipper is Dipper is um a Grumman goose. She used to be a transport plane up in Alaska. And the thing that you have to know about Dipper is that she is down horrendous. Yep. Yep. Absolutely uh, she... sort of mandated to watch an HR DVD about like conduct in the workplace as character. Yeah, Dipper is at all times about ten seconds off getting a lawsuit. Like, yeah, she... because she's a huge fangirl for Dustin. Like, yeah. she loves him. When she meets him, she's like, "Oh, I, I, I saw all of your like racism shit." You're smaller than I thought, oh. but that's okay. Um, it d interesting. Mm. She also yes. yeah, takes great lengths immediately after this to stress that her name is Miss <laughs> Miss yes. Dustin. Yes. She's, she's, she like leans right in. She's and goes very, raw. very horny. And the thing about her is that she has lips. And they're not like uh, d distinct from the outside, right? They're not like 
say green M and M lips. No, what they are is that they like th- her like fuselage just like opens when she speaks and it like forms into them. And the effect on a character whose design again is horny is so fucking weird, dude. It's it's, it's not good. I'll tell you this not, for a it's, fact. It's, it's not really good. not good. It's not good. But we get hit with a one-two punch. Right? Yeah, because right. But we don't meet Blade the, Ranger because is... he's out fighting no. a fire or some shit. But what we no. do meet, what we, oh boy. what we do meet is a heavy lifting aircraft. Yep, uh, yep. big sky crane, big green guy. Um, and his name is we, we, another lifter. Another another like fun visual gag. We see him like uh, lifting uh, things of like uh, logs, like he's you know like he's lifting weights. Yeah, that is fun. Cute. I did like that. Um, so the thing about Windlifter right, is 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 that he's um, he's this this is a sentence that's been sort of like on my mind since I saw the movie. He's a a spiritual Native American helicopter. <laughs> he is a he, yeah okay. So there's a lot to discuss here. First yeah, of all, yes. Yes. Let's say that again for posterity. A, he is a spiritual Native American helicopter. Yes. And the thing is, right, if you took one of those qualities off of him, he wouldn't be nearly as memorable a character in a bad way as he is, right? If you had just gone, oh, this is a helicopter and he's Native American, we would get like maybe five minutes about this of all of the jokes we're going to do about like you know, what this suggests about, like, Mesoamerican societies. Mm. But the fact that he's... Listen, right? The the first thing, the first fucking thing that he says to Dustin is... The one that Lakota call Heoka beats his drum with the wind to make thunder. He explains the concept of fire in a mythological allegory and a fucking bald eagle screeches in the background just so you know this guy eh, might have might have magical powers you know yeah so so the the creators of cars uh the creators of planes yes. to fire and yes. rescue did in fact speak to several native american advocacy groups to figure out the best way to portray this man in a non-racist way and i can only imagine that the first bit of advice they gave was do not give him magical powers yeah, um, unfortunately, don't, especially like magical, like shamanic powers that make him more connected to nature. Do not let him sense fires due to his connection to nature. Unfortunately, his opening scene is him sensing a fire due to his connection with nature. Yes. He's he's very he's very strongly suggested to have like some kind of power of premonition. Right? He says things before they happen. Very slightly. And it's it's bad. Yeah. I, and it's all done in, like, every, all of his delivery is like that in that kind of affect, which is fair enough, right? But, like, not pretending to be any kind of an expert here. Every experience that I've had with Native American people has used that kind of, like, tone and that kind of suggestion of mythology as a way to make fun of white people. And it being an absolute deadpan form of irony. And so I was waiting the whole time he was doing the like explaining how fire thing happened. Yeah, for him for to him just to, like go, ah, break gotcha. character and just yeah, go ah. talk like a normal I don't say yeah. normal person, but talk like a fucking <laughs> No, dig yourself d- deeper no, into the Because it's clearly they've made him him speak like this in order to stress A that he's Native American mm-hmm. and and B to suggest some sort of like Deep connection of a national yeah, yeah, park. Every, every every like line delivery that he has is very like portentous and meaningful, and it's like, yeah, okay, but I think you'll find that like a lot of Native American people are very adept at using uh, those expectations, ironically, yeah, and as like, a bit. yes. And the other yes. thing that would be fine about this guy, like, it could be closer mm. to fine, is if. All of his co-workers and friends responded to him speaking like this by being like, ah, classic windlifter. When instead what they all do is wear throughout every time he does this an expression of complete disgust. What it's yeah, it's <laughs> they so are fucking always weird, like, dude. What the fuck? Every time it's, he starts speaking. <laughs> it's like a combination of disgust and like sometimes awe, right? right? But like that, that everyone always takes him 
a hundred percent seriously, a hundred percent of the time, which is, I suppose, better than it might have been. But it's not what I would think of as like a, a nuanced or a sensitive portrayal, you know. Um, it's not so great. <laughs> no, no. So, so Windlifter is there and he's being portentous. Dipper is there and he's being horny. There's a bunch of fucking forklifts that we're not going to remember. But Blade Ranger is out surveying the fire ground because he's like he's a workaholic, right? Um, mm-hmm. So they go out to they Blade go out to the Ranger. Fl- Blade Ranger, the hot helicopter played by Blade Ed Harris, Ranger, call, the calls in a yep. calls in a fire so we can see them all like deploy. They all go out, and Dusty Dustin gets in the way because he doesn't know what to do, and this makes Blade Ranger mad at him. And the sort of middle third of this movie is essentially a like training montage, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, where where Blade Ranger is the like sort of like. Fire drill sergeant, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just like the thing about him is that you'd you'd expect that character mm. to be like a real hard case or like just mean, right? But he's actually sure. just nothing but quite genuinely nice. He's very professional, to du- like which to Dusty, is like a kind of meanness, I guess. But throughout this, there are some parts where, like, they're they're training. They go to Augurin Canyon, which is very funny because. Mm-hmm. To auger in means to, 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 to crash horrendously. Crash, to crash in such a way that you actually plow the ground. On yeah, the way to in. auger yes. in. Um, uh, and there's a bit where Dusty can't go as fast as uh, as he is supposed to do for for a specific bit of the training course, and he just gets yelled at for it. And I'm like, mm. I don't understand why you're not telling him. <laughs> you, but yeah, you he, are well, disabled. That, that like would be a hip violation. No, he refused because he's ashamed. He's ashamed of his disability, which is like, as again, as a as a, as a like storytelling thing. The the fact that it's presented like uncritically is bad, but like yeah. as as like a feature of like yeah, people are absolutely embarrassed by like disabilities or limitations, or, like asking for help or adjustments. It's just that's never made explicit. Instead, what this movie teaches you is that like if you do require any kind of like adjustments in the workplace, you must conceal your shame <laughs> until mm-hmm. the last possible moment. Um, so, God, we're yeah, not firing this movie. Uh, yeah. Th- <laughs> it's actually, okay. there's a lot to talk about, it turns out. You see? See? There is. There I know, is. I was wrong. I'm sorry. They, um, th- th- they immediately give him invasive surgery, is the other thing. Like, step one of training, uh, Blade Ranger just goes, right, cut his wheels off. <laughs> yeah, which I did, right. We- <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> step, step one: you you train hard and fast to become a firefighter. Uh, but what you actually do is they just give you fucking they implant you in like a sort of like space marines dreadnought type thing. No, what what they, they do is they put pontoons, pontoons yeah. on him. They give him pontoons, yes, so that he can like suck up water through the pontoons and then dump it onto, uh, onto and, a fire. And dusty spots. Much like Mayday had uh, a wall of pictures of uh, firefighters, and he goes, mm. "Yo, what are you gonna do to get your face on this wall?" To which the forklift Mario replies, uh, "Crash," mm-hmm. <laughs> because this it's, is of it's, course it's, it's a the memorial wall. wall. Yeah. yeah, and and the thing the thing is, it's important that you know that even within the the, the planes universe, firefighting has a high casualty rate. <laughs> It's like this is a this is a dangerous occupation in which you might die. Um, which mm. oh, okay, sure. Um, now we, at this point we have to meet the C plot, and the C plot arrives in the form of a guy who I thought was voiced by Eddie Izzard and isn't. Um, it would have been powerful of him to go back, <laughs> go back for more yeah. Eddie Izzard. <laughs> go, yeah, yeah three thirteen a.m. Going back for more Eddie Izzard. We meet the it's... the superintendent of this uh, national park. Who? What's Cad his fucking oh, Spinner? God, it's Cad, Cad Spinner. Spinner. Cad Spinner, yeah. Cad, Cad Spinner is a Cadillac Escalade, uh, which, aside from the sort of the semiotics of making that a you know a, a car to make fun of, he's like a a sort of a pampered, freeing, uh, luxury SUV who is the head of the park. And then, w- strangely, right as he's coming in, we get a, a a line that I just read as like straight up homophobia in the kids' movie about planes because. As Cad Spinner drives up, 
Windlifter goes, He waxes himself daily. <laughs> the thing is, right? Uh, what does that mean? He, he's, <laughs> what the fuck well, that it's, like, it's, it's like a metrosexual joke, right? Like he's effeminate. He cares too much about his appearance. Like it, it's, it's like waxing hair, but instead it's like a car wax, I guess. Mm, I, this man is a faggot. It's weird that they put that in the children's <laughs> show, but you know, it, it, right. it, it is, it is, it is, it is weird. Oh well. And and the thing, the thing about Cad Spinner is that he has this massive lodge that he's he really has this in. fucking like Ozymandias tier yes! of lodge that yes! he has built. Yes, he, he has it, built this massive it's fucking project that he has diverted like ninety percent of the firefighting budget to building a big lodge, and that lodge is fucking enormous because it needs Why to be has able he done to have this? full size planes in as like customers so why so it's, why, why has he done there this there are like internal shots of the lodge that are cyclopean in, in its fucking architecture absolutely <laughs> it's so, unbelievable ah uh, it's all made out of wood as well so like god knows yeah we we can we can see what's what's going to happen here um, yeah. so so there's there's another fire that breaks out Oh, and he it, Cad while he's there, he notices that um fucking Dusty is famous and is like, hey, you should come to the grand opening of this lodge. Yeah, he's kind of a star fucker. It's weird. Yeah, um, and he gets his name wrong a couple of times to to sort of cement his one bit. Yeah, that he has being being rude. Um, and he also says an insane phrase, which is he says, "The Secretary of the Interior of the United States will be there." And I wrote, "Hello." <laughs> So you, first of all, I, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of like this idea that like the, you know, the Secretary of the Interior is like a big deal. Um, I, I, well, I wrote down here that I, guy, yeah, yeah, I, I did appreciate this, this look into the sort of the cutthroat internal politics and hard partying lifestyle of the National Park Service. Mm. Um, so Dustin gets invited to an after hours party in a hangar, right? Whether it's it's like a watch party, they're watching um, a, a DVD. He doesn't know what it is yet, and what it turns out to be <laughs> is a TV show that Blade Ranger used to be on as an actor yep. called called Chops. It's like it's Chips. The yeah, the it's the California about, Highway like, Patrol, but it's, it's yeah, Chops but, but and it's helicopters. two helicopters, and it's and it's fucking Blade Ranger. Yep, and. And a helicopter Nick that you Lupin Lopez, a helicopter who, without knowing anything else about, without knowing the first thing about him, months when ago. we did Cars Two months ago, I posted a picture of him and I went, "That helicopter is a fucking twink," and I was right. I was right to do it, and I have been vindicated once again by history. <sighs> like helicopters, a twink. It's also it's racist. Impossible. It's like, also, I, oh, I have a, I have a drop of the fucking racism. Let's go. Good move, partner. Man, why you choppies always falling off? Fun? Hey, you think it's fun running station wagons off the road, you punk? <laughs> yeah, when that accent came on, um, we both myself and my, uh, my girlfriend had to pause the fucking show and go, <laughs> what the fuck? Because this car is, he's yes, is like a, oh my god, what is it? What would you even call this fucking thing? It's not a lowrider either. It's it, it's like I don't even know. It it looks kind of like a muscle car, but it has flame decals, like you would have tattoos on a person. It's what the movie um, "Live and Let Die" referred to as a pimp mobile. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. That's what it is. It's it's oh just. Oh my god! It is a racially coded car, oh <laughs> and it god. is given that voice. Yes, and and. The cops Car yell at it a lot. Racialized. Yes. And, um, um, uh, uh. <laughs> so, 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 Blade Ranger and Nick Lopez work together as like partners in this in in the fiction of this show. Um, and we hmm. gone. There's there's something legitimately very fun in this one, which is that um, they go to the, the, the Blade Ranger and his partner Nick uh, go to rescue someone from like the top story of a building that's burning down and fucking. He shoots out his like hoist and catches it, and everyone yeah. in everyone who's watching it yells "hoist" and drinks some oil, which in, <laughs> which yeah, insinuates like that, that there's a drinking game going on, which I really do enjoy a <laughs> yeah, lot. Yeah, I I appreciated that. 
Yeah. Uh, so so we find out about chops, and then we also find out we get uh, D- Dusty gets gets a call from uh, from home. Where they say, oh, "We thought we found your gearbox, but we can't. So you're gonna stay uh, physically disabled forever." Sorry. And he's like sad about this. Yeah. Then there's a fire because it's a firefighting movie. We belatedly remember this. Um, and they kind of they contain this fire, but at that moment. The VIPs, including such luminaries as the Secretary of the Interior of the United States, fly in, and the downdraft from them flying in reignites the fire. Yep. So Dusty is like impetuous and like uh, he 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 like crashes into a river. Blade Ranger tries to save him, and the way in which Blade Ranger ends up saving him is to. Force the two of them into an abandoned mine and wait for the fire to pass over them, which is uh, a, a thing that notoriously, well, I would say famous rather than notorious, wildland firefighter Ed Pulaski did in the Great Fire of 1910. Uh, except the, I don't know why I know this, other than to say that in order to do this, he had to threaten his fire crew with a pistol that he just brought to the fire, and also half of them died. So, mm. and it, yeah, and dudes rock. Yeah, so he he like fucking <laughs> Blade Ranger like locks in Dustin in this fucking cave, and you see like the, this flashover happen, and it you get like a really close up shot of the fire genuinely damaging Blade Ranger, like his metal is pitting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's, fucking hey, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, genuine that's a body bit, horror. It's- yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, when Blade Ranger is trying to get him into the, the fucking mine, uh, Dusty goes, but we'll suffocate. To which I wrote down simply, how? Yeah. You'll what? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, <laughs> you no, you won't. In there? <laughs> during the... So, something else that we should know before the... Uh, <laughs> during... there's a, They all go to the grand opening... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two yeah. things we have to note about the grand opening, right? Okay. Uh, There's a couple of things. First of all, once again, cannot stress enough that this lodge is absolutely insane massive, in its scope. Massive, There's, yes. like, multiple helipads all over it. It's because like if you built the Burj Khalifa in Yellowstone. Yeah, it's, it, it's insane. Mm. Fucking amazing. Uh, the other thing is that they meet this, like, camper van couple, a couple of RVs called Harvey and yes. Winnie. Yes, because Winnebago and RV, very yeah, funny. Very but- fun. They, 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 he's, he used to be a tire salesman, and we get this line, and I just want to preserve the like dead silence at the end of this line too. For our wedding day, bought her the best set of white walls. We wore off the treads on our honeymoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a horny movie. It's it's Fuck, it's, it's a, a really dis- dis- disturbingly horny disconcertingly movie. Disconcertingly horny movie. Because we haven't been mentioning it because it's table stakes, but like every time Dipper is on screen. <laughs> Every time she has no other like thing there is going literally on a other point than a horny where where and it's just this like I don't know if it even plays into anything else but Dusty wakes up in the night and notices that she's just straight watching him through the window oh, oh I I have the drop for this I like watching you sleep I, I, you can't say that to your coworkers dude it's not I, healthy it's uh, not appropriate it's not, it's not appropriate, appropriate relationship uh, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> And so while while the Winnebago and the RV are, are having a little chat, th- they they offer up a toast, um, and they let yes. Windlifter do the toast. And what and Windlifter, Windlifter does the toast in the form of recounting a fable, uh, uh, a, a parable mm. about a, a, a coyote who brought the gift of fire to, and here you can hear the if you like the gear change, the first. Vehicles. Now there's but, a lot there. Um, yeah. But, but what? The other thing mm. is the entire time he's talking, there is panpipes going on in the background, and he's, coyote howls at yeah. the end in the distance, and he's lit from under by the fire. It's all and played the whole completely ti- straight. The whole yeah. time, everyone who's listening to him is again in that mix of like awe and just like bemusement, right? <laughs> they're not, yeah, they're not like ah, like, oh, classic the, like, windlifter, my buddy. Just Part like, of the myth, ugh. right, is is that the coyote, like, he burns his paws stealing fire, and they become, like, blackened, and he bites them off, right? It's not that weird in the context of, like, mythology, right? 
but he recounts this, and then Dusty is like, "Well, that's fucking gross, man. That's crazy." You, you, you and it's it's like it's weirdly racist. The other thing is, of course, um, Coyote. I believe Coyote was a name because instead mm. of saying his own paws, this guy goes tires. <laughs> so, oh like, yeah, he this does, is, doesn't he? This guy ate oh, his own tires. Is he the ate joke. his yeah. own tires? So, yeah, Dust, Dusty has a comment on that. Um, and at this mm. point, I'd like to go. So did Christopher Columbus just arrive in America and find helicopters there? Is that what we're talking about? Because Columbus would be a car. A riding, boat, riding a sentient boat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He had three boats, the, the Nino, the Pinto, and the Santa Maria, uh, all of which were like guys, horrendously racist. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so a bunch, of, a bunch of cars in like weird sort of pointy helmets showed up to find uh, various societies of helicopters, I guess. Yeah, Mesoamerican societies of helicopters, absolutely. Uh, they, they, they introduced tractors to, to the new world. Um, and, and Pontiac Aztecs. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. I, I was okay. okay. I was happy with that. That's my uh, one. Come on. Okay, okay. We, 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 so, 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 ni- so fucking Blade Ranger, right? He, yes. like, he, 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 gets, he gets burned up, right? Um, and... He he like, but he saves he saves Dusty, and he's like unconscious, and he's like grounded for repairs. Um, mm-hmm. And Dusty like talks to Maru, the forklift, the mechanic, about chops, about this show that he was on, and and Maru just goes, "Oh yeah, Nick Lupin Lopez was killed when he touched some fentanyl or whatever." Yeah, he uh, saw and- some fentanyl and instantly died, <laughs> is the problem. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, and so Blade Ranger was fucking traumatized by this, and he never acted again. because yep. Blade <laughs> Ranger made the most based career choice move ever, which is fake cop to real firefighter. <laughs> Just immeasurably a better thing to do with your time. He, 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 he stopped being a fake cop because Nick Lopez was trying to do a stunt and just fucking Died in a freak cross. Just completely ate shit. Exploded. Because <laughs> cars die, right? We know this from yeah, cars too. Yeah, we established that. It's yeah, easy absolutely. to kill a fucking vehicle. So, so Lopez just cra- <laughs> this twink helicopter just smashed bodily into like a fucking building <laughs> during the filming of the TV show Chops. <laughs> That's right. And so Blade is traumatized. Um, also, I, I, it, that that also like makes another thing in retrospect horrifying because like Blade's catchphrase when he like when Nick Lopez does something cool is "good move, partner," right? Um, but th- <laughs> but then the, the the bit right before he did to fucking before Dusty crashes and gets Nick fucking burned up. Is he finally wins Blade's respect, and Blade uses the fucking line only to see for the second time in his life one of his friends just fucking like eat shit immediately. He must think he's cursed. Like, what kind of fucking survivor's guilt is this helicopter carrying around? I can't believe this is my job that it leads me to say sentences like this. This, yeah, this plane is. This this helicopter, my apologies. This helicopter is traumatized completely. Also, also, uh, in reference to Nick Lopez being a twink, I, I simply wrote down the word helicacy. Um, Come on. The, the, mm. So, <sighs> helicacy was, um, I think, one of the, the Athenian scholars, the philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Cad Spinner like tries to turn on the massive sprinkler system. He's had installed in the lodge to protect it from the fire, which has now like jumped its bounds. Um, and in doing so, he diverts all of the water from the firefighters, so they just can't make new fire retardants. Yeah, they just um, have to stick with like water from the river instead of the yes. the red stuff that they use. You guys say retardant a lot. It's very they fun. Say, for they that. say retardant a lot. If you want a drop of a guy saying retardant, I have. I gotta mix up a fresh batch of retardant. Completely <laughs> so, normal. So, normal sons. Um, totally. No, yeah, there's no, absolutely. Nothing that's what it is. It. It's it's a fucking it fire retardant. It's that's... called Foss check. It's a uh, yeah no. Uh, anyway, so but the fire yeah. the fire like he- heads towards the lodge anyway, and they have to evacuate. Um. 
And at this point, we have to, like, again, do some firefighting shit, which, fine, whatever, not really, uh, not really paying attention. But the RV couple that yes. we met earlier, the insanely horny ones, mm -hmm. are trapped because they're on a bridge in Augurin Canyon. Uh, because they were trying to find where they had their first kiss, and they just went into a fucking wildfire like morons would. Um, yeah. So Dusty has to like push his engine to the limit, the thing that he like shouldn't do in order to try and save them. And then at that exact moment, Blade shows up and he uses the hoist and he sort of saves the fucking thing, um, but at a horrible cost because redlining the gearbox causes Dusty to just crash. Right. Um, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm using here the Wikipedia synopsis to help me along, and it's right. not very helpful, which is why no. I've got like several scenes in the wrong order, but if you go to like, we're on, the, we're on to the second to last paragraph of the Wikipedia summary, thank god, uh, and it says, Unconscious, Dusty is airlifted back to base, where he wakes up five days later, and at this point someone has embedded a link to the Wikipedia page for coma. Yeah, I see And this. I just find that very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Cessna in a coma. I, I I know it's serious. I he's just fucking. He's out for five days. Um, which is enough time for them to have like fixed everything. Uh, Dipper they... stayed by his side the whole time. He wakes up and she she asks him if he knows what pegging is. Yeah. <laughs> um. Hey, they, they, they like. <laughs> they, they they demote Cad Spinner and send him to like Death Valley, um, and they make an old park ranger who has a stupid hat the new superintendent. Yeah, he's been present. Um, there, there's a bunch of characters that show up for like two seconds and go away. Yeah. There's like there's a there's a firefighting fire... truck. Um, that's yeah, who's who's played by fucking Alaski. Brock Samson. Um, who's uh, uh, fuck? What's the Patrick Warburton? Yeah, Patrick. So I'm just. Yeah, Sorry, so two seconds. Uh, I was trying to figure out who that was. Yeah, it's yeah, Brock Patrick Samson, the, the the fire truck. Um, he but, can't not. He can't not be in a fucking Disney film. I don't know what. No, Alice just doing anything he can these days. I mean, it, it pays the bills, you know. Yeah. Um, now at this point, we have to completely undercut the the like a plot about physical disability, right? Which is like, yeah, throughout throughout this movie, right? We've been going like. You know, you can have a second career in your life. You don't have to, like, if, if you, you know, dedicated your whole life to something and then for, like, reasons beyond your control, you can't do it anymore. That's not, like, you, you don't have to, like, give up. You don't have to, like, despair. You can find meaning elsewhere. You can, like, uh, go and do something else. And in some ways, that's as fulfilling. And, like, you can get the, like, respect of your friends and coworkers uh, without having to, like, uh, you you know, kill yourself over it. Um, yeah, and that's and all. That's all interesting, and and you know, maybe yeah. a good lesson for some kids to have. But check this out. Mm. What if instead, uh, you just fixed it? Yeah. What if you just got better? What if he just healed? Um, while what he was in that got, coma. What if, you just, what, if what if what if the forklift fixed him? What what, what if does? by completing his primary character arc, accepting his disability, and learning uh this this new career that already helped people, uh, he is rewarded by being completely healed. I think it would be very funny if that was the way that it worked in real life, is that you had to have total sincerity that you didn't need to be healed, and that's the only way you could be, and God is just like, ah, I got you, got gotcha, you. Bitch. <laughs> but no, eh. like, like, I was genuinely like, it is a good lesson to teach kids in a sort of sensitive way that sometimes, like, people's capacities and their abilities change, and they don't get better. And that sometimes that you know that it's not about you know like getting back to the thing that you used to do, but in like finding uh, you know a, a new purpose and a new meaning. And instead, they just you know sort of ditch that. Yeah. And in instead, they were just like, okay, and now you're now you're normal again. No, you are no you're longer you're physically again. disabled. Yeah. Dot MP3. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. It, and and it's fine, fine, whatever. Because it's not like he quits being a firefighter immediately thereafter. Right. He does no, become no, he, a firefighter still. Yeah, and he goes home to be the second firefighter to to Mayday, who has been like refurbished. Yeah, and, and there's shiny, and, and there's this. The <laughs> yeah, fuck, May Mayday's built as shit now. That's the other thing you get back there, and he's <laughs> yeah. insane. Yeah, th another lesson for this: if you're old, just stop. <laughs> yeah, stop being old, bitch. Just get get normal <laughs> yeah. again. You can be refitted, whatever. Like that's right. That's right. 
Age age doesn't exist. That's fine. There's no there's no major disadvantages to aging. You can just deal with that. Also, physical disability is a myth. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the final scene, every character that we've met thus far comes down to prop wash junction, leaving the national park entirely undefended against fire. Yep. And they will hang yep. out in, for the, a in bit. the middle of in the middle of fire season. Middle of fire season. Canonically. Canonically. <laughs> I'm like. I man, okay. <laughs> Maybe leave someone behind. Nope, nope, can't do it. Uh, but they all and... come down to rescue the corn festival again. Um. Yeah, yeah, and and I I guess Dipper's gonna like peg the shit out of Dusty. I don't know. Yeah, I, unclear what their relationship is by the end. I think. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, he doesn't ever really seem to reciprocate anything. No, She's not once. Just horny at him. Like he could be fucking gay for all we know. He doesn't like. He's not interested, but she's like all he wants 100... to do is go fast. Like he doesn't care about fucking. Yeah, yeah he doesn't yeah. care about pussy or any shit like that. He just wants to no, be absolutely. a racing guy. No, that 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 plain pussy, that pussy. Um, and then the, the the credits roll, and we find out that this movie was directed by a guy called Robert Bob's Ganaway, which was really all I needed to like the the perfect little cherry on the top of this movie. Produced by Feral Baron. <sighs> what? <laughs> Feral Baron, like Bombs. Will Feral surname, and then yeah, no. Baron with two R's. Yeah, the all of these names are made up. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this movie killed the Planes franchise completely. Um, <laughs> abs absolutely, it was it was relatively commercially successful, but not enough. Uh, the, uh, and and so <laughs> the hmm. character Windlifter. Finally was enough, and everyone was like, okay, we can't do this. We yeah, Windlifter do doesn't, this doesn't need to be in anything else. They cancelled the sequel to this. And in fact, they cancelled it so hard they shut down the whole animation studio. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> which is one way to one way to finish a franchise. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's it's like we can we that. can never do this again. Um the other so, thing is like Planes Fire and Rescue came out 2014. And just yes. like planes came out 2013, so it was just like yeah, fucking pumping. They were gonna, these they were gonna try and do like ten pole, like one a year every year, uh, and this one did, did did not do because of the 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 twink helicopter and the the Native American helicopter and Ed Harris for some reason and the horny RVs. It, it's a weird movie, and I'm so so glad that I made us watch it. Yep. Do we have any closing thoughts about Planes 2, Fire and Rescue? I have one. Go on, then. I, I have, a, I have a, a theory, a really out there theory that I can't defend for the life of me, and I, I, I will not be accepting scrutiny on this at all, which is that I think that the, like, the point of doing Planes as a franchise, I think this was demographically targeted, and I think Planes was meant to be the, like, red state version of cars and i think that's why they got dane cook not going to explain this further but i i choose to believe this i think the jokes and the sensibility in there are closer to a sort of like a a pg version of a redneck comedy tour than uh than any of the the cars movies were you know what yeah actually you're right <laughs> I, I, you're actually I right because there's a lot this, more like genuine homophobia <laughs> Yeah, in yep. in this one, and mm -hmm. like disrespect for for Native Americans in this one, than there is in like Cars. Yeah. Mm. Cars, right? Let's just Cars Two is about the comedy relief side character from the first Cars movie becoming an international super spy. Yeah, and about and also how, how being like, trans is deceptive. Yeah, being trans is and, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's table stakes. That's just normal. Um, sure, everyone yeah. thinks that. Absolutely, we all agree with that. Mm, of course, of course. Um, planes two, planes two is much lower stakes. I'll tell you that for a fact. That's true. That's absolutely true. They didn't. They didn't bother to go with the uh, the world ending like fucking all in all, fucking. No, although that does remind me, there is one line we skipped over, right? Oh, Which come is on. At at the beginning of his training, right? So Blade Ranger has to like kind of put Dusty in his place because he's like quite cocky, right? Yes. But Dusty, Dusty has like done shit before, right? Like he mm -hmm. flew around the world, and he says as much. He's like, "Well, I, I you know, I, I flew around the world. I'm not, you know, I'm not an idiot." Um, 
and Blade Ranger, in perfect, like, Ed Harris ominous voice, drops the hardest line, and he just goes, was the world on fire when you did it? What? what, what? <laughs> was the whole world on fire? And he's like, This is a no. situation that I regularly encounter as a firefighter. And it's, to be it's... fair, later on, what? there's like a shot where they're flying through the fire to get out to the other mm -hmm. side so that they can head it off because there's just no way to go round it. It's, it's so out of control. And fucking hell, it did, like, they sell the whole world is on fire in that shot. Oh, like, yeah, the, 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 the fire effects on this, pretty good. It's, it, it just, good. it reminds me most specifically of, like, the bit in fucking Mad Max Fury Road when they drive into the sandstorm, and it's like, mm. volume cuts out, there's just particles. <laughs> so the, the lesson here... From from this podcast is that this movie is as good as Mad Max Fury Road, if not better. I would I wouldn't say that because Mad Max Fury Road is maybe one of my favorite movies ever no, made. No, no, I, th I, th I think we can I think we can end this by saying that it's a better movie than Mad Max Fury Road. This has been Kill James Bond. You got any we'll final thoughts, Abby? Devons. Hello, my name's Abigail. Okay, there she is. I just I, you know she's just such a delight. Um, Absolutely. What's and, this and it, and it's, it, I it's... don't think that this is a piece of art. I think that this is a uh, cynical, <laughs> cynical piece of uh, piece of fan fiction. Is what I think this is. Hmm. <laughs> well, I didn't actually know that was what that one was, but you know what, it fits too. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. It really does. And it's your pick for the next one because we're doing another double dragon episode. Yeah, just so, in case. Oh man, I will. Yeah. I will have a thing. My I'm main problem I'm excited to find is out. every time I think of a movie that I'd like to talk about on this, I then have to attempt to find any possible way to stream the fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I have to actually watch it. Anyway, we will see you for whatever that whatever piece of like Australian Hong Kong joint produced martial arts nonsense that turns out to be. Almost certainly. <laughs> what a great episode of the Kill James Bond podcast. I'm recording this outro, as I typically do, uh, the day before this episode goes live, and I am sick as a fucking dog right now, and I have to read out 52 names, so let's just go ahead and crack right on with that. Um, Kill James Bond will return in two weeks' time on the free feed, hopefully with Skyfall. We will see. Uh, if not, it might well be another Double Dragon. Um, and we'll see what we can do. But if two weeks is simply too long for you to wait, you can head on to our Patreon, where we upload bonus episodes. And that's patreon.com slash killjamesbond. But special thanks, of course, to our £15 and above patrons, and those are Forks Winchester, Christine Fox, Paint McCalla, Jack Holmes, George Rohak, Thomas Oberhardt, British Pterodactyl, Sol, Nikki, Phil West Music, Carolyn Tankersley, Benno Rice, Rain, Max Kapinski, Kit Devine, Amanda Rock. <clears throat> oh, fuck me. <laughs> Leave that in. Uh, Amanda Rogda, Max Gamenhart, Sydney Steckle, Dread Pirate, Robin, J. Martindale, Hell Bloodhands, the long name that I hate, Jack Bushel, Tarp O, Field Commissar Jen Jen, Mothman, Big Titty Goth Girl, Timothy Pajorni, Trip, Kentucky Fried Commie, Michael Lada, Ellie Without the E, Charlie in the Closet, Jenna and Poor, Zoe Shepard, Elizabeth Cox, Finn Ross, Alfredo, Avery Darling, Philippa Smith, Wolfie, Rail Leal, Richard Drum, Al Owing, David Wick Ramaratna, James Knapman, Millie, Robbie Morgan, Josh Simmons, Penny Banks, Bon Le Bon, and I make Devon say this out loud. Yes, you do. Kill James Bond has been Devon and Alice, although typically we also have Abigail. Um, our producer is the wonderful neighbor Thay. Our podcast art is by Matty Lubchansky. And our website is by Tom Allen. And I will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>